in hand, so interventions can be taken and the extra time given. And I call Christina McKelvey to be followed by Gordon Lindhurst. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer, and Happy New Year to you and the Chamber too. Um, colleagues, what are fundamental human rights? So the right to life, not to be tortured or enslaved, to liberty and security, to a fair trial, to a private and family life, to freedom of thought, conscience and religion, to freedom of expression, to freedom of assembly and association, the right to marriage and not be subjected to discrimination, to a peaceful enjoyment of your property, to fair and free elections and the right to an education. And when this parliament and many parliaments across this planet are advancing and consolidating human rights, the UK government wants to scrap the Human Rights Act and take us out of the ECHR. Maybe some in this place need a reminder of where these rights come from. The UK was the first signatory to the European Convention on, the hum on Human Rights when it was signed in Rome on the 4th of November 1950. In the early 1940s, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill raised the idea of a Council of Europe. As Europe reeled and emerged from the World War II, hearing some of the horrific details of the Holocaust, that was his first thought. We need to come together. The idea of establishing the structure of this united Europe, whose moral concepts will be able to win the respect and recognition of mankind. Human rights, presiding officer, is in our DNA. That's what I call British values. The Council of Europe set to work creating a human rights convention. Again, Churchill was an advocate. He proclaimed, in the centre of our movement stands the idea of a charter of human rights guarded by freedom and sustained by law. And one of the key writers of the European Convention on Human Rights was British Conservative MP and lawyer David Maxwell Fife. Maxwell Fife's contribution to the Convention was so great that he was described as the doctor who brought the child to birth. He had been a prosecutor at Nuremberg and helped to draft the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Human rights is in our DNA. So why would the current UK Government want out of the ECHR and a repeal of our domestic human rights legislation? Why would they want that? I think it's very worrying that this Tory Government promotes an end to the free movement of people, closes off membership of the EU market, makes relentless cuts in support benefits to vulnerable people and wants to keep out, well, everybody who wasn't born and bred here. I'm not altogether clear who is included in Theresa May's shared society, only that it seems to be a select group and it's certainly not the people that I know. And for Douglas Ross's attention, where has Theresa May at any point in the last six months given any reassurance to any EU national who has sought that reassurance? She hasn't. She never has. On you go. Douglas Ross. Theresa May has given that assurance every single time by saying, by say, well, I've been asked a question, so I'll try to answer, by saying that the rights of EU nationals living in the UK is secured, while the rights of UK people living in the EU is secured by those countries. And I think that makes a perfectly sensible argument. Christina McKelvey. Where and when has she ever said that? Because I've not seen it and I've not heard it and our government here has asked it. M numbers and numbers of organisations have asked it and no one has had that answer. She has never given that reassurance. She's given some really words about a shared society. Please, let's just stick to the facts. And these rights, these rights matter in everyday life. For example, the Human Rights Act has prote protected victims of domestic violence, has allowed victims of rape to ensure that the police properly investigate the offences. They have been used by disabled people affected by welfare reform, by LGBTI people who have used human rights to overcome discrimination. The Human Rights Act has been used by the families of military personnel killed in active service because the Ministry of Defence of this government supplied them with outdated equipment. And an elderly couple married for 65 years who a local authority was going to force to live apart, they used the Human Rights Act so that they could stay together. Presiding officer, in November 2016, a report on the inquiry concerning the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland carried out by the committee under Article 6 
of the optional protocol to the Convention on Cumulative Impact of Legislation, Policies and Measures adopted by the State Party on Social Security Schemes and on Work and Employment found grave and systemic violations of the rights of disabled people by the UK State Party. Theresa May has never given those people reassurances either. Welfare reform, a snooper's charter, trade union laws, and now they want to take away any recourse to justice you may have via the Human Rights Act or the European Convention on Human Rights. Presiding officer, this is a government that's hell-bent on attacking and undermining these hard-fought-for protections and freedoms. A right-wing, xenophobic, reactionary government who uses citizens as bargaining chips and has no care for people who are sick, unemployed or marginalised because of their race, their religion, their culture or their sexuality. Presiding officer, never forget injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And silence in the face of atrocity is not neutrality. Silence in the face of atrocity is acquiescence. I will, we will not remain silent on any attempt to take away those rights, human rights that are so precious to our human decency and democracy. I will not be silent. Gordon Lindhurst to be followed by Stuart McMillan. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. This afternoon we have yet another 